Hello everyone, welcome to Research Hub. In this lecture, I'm going to show you the basic principles of multi-criteria decision making, widely known as the MCDM method. So here, as the name says here, we will have multiple criteria for decision making. Okay, so any kind of decision making that involves multi-criteria, multiple criteria, it could be three, it could be five, it could be 10, it could be 15, so just multiple criteria. Okay, so when we have a decision making problem that involves multiple criteria, we call them multi criteria decision making. There are many methods for multi criteria decision making models. One of the common one is the analytic hierarchy process model or the analytic network process model. One of the most common uh, recently developed one is the best source method. So th th there are quite a lot of methods related to this, right? But now, in this lecture, what we will see is the basic concept and basic working mechanism of multi-criteria decision-making. So let's say you have a situation where you need to buy a product. Let's say it could be a mobile phone or a car or a house, something like that. And then you have to find out the relevant criteria for choosing one of the alternatives. So this is something you have to have in mind in most of the multi-criteria decision-making methods you will have some criteria and you will have some alternatives and you will use the criteria okay to find out the best suitable alternative okay so it could be let's say if you are thinking from a supply chain perspective which supplier should i go for if you are thinking of buying a new equipment and there are multiple suppliers of the equipment then you rate the equipments and find out which equipment you should buy by considering a list of criteria Sometimes we don't really have to have the alternative. Sometimes we only want to assess the importance of criteria. So for example, assessing criteria for risk assessment during COVID-19 or assessing risk assessment for supply chain agility. Okay, so things like that. We don't have to have always the alternatives. We can sometimes only deal with the criteria, only rank the criteria and find out which is the most important one. Okay, and sometimes we combine the criteria with the alternatives and try to find out which one of the alternatives is the best one. So now here actually we will see how we use the criteria to find out an alternative, the best suitable alternative. So let's say here we have these criteria, five criteria, criteria, quality, price, comfort, safety, style. This could be our five criteria for uh, buying a mobile phone or buying a car or buying a house, something like that, right? And if you want to have more criteria, you can add as much as you want. So let's say if I'm thinking of buying a mobile phone, I can have a camera option here, right? So it could be my sixth criteria. So normally if we have more than nine or 10 criteria, then it is a good alternative to actually group them into a main criteria level and sub criteria level. Okay, so that's another approach we can take when there are many, more than nine, 10 criteria, then we can actually group them under some higher level criteria. So, but now let's focus on only these six criteria and try to see how can, how can we really work it out. So let's say these are our criteria and what could be our alternatives? Our alternatives could be, let's say Samsung S20, iPhone 12, Nokia 9. So these are just some um, three mobile models. Okay, so I'm just putting these three mobile models, but it doesn't have to be mobile. It could be your suppliers, right? It could be your equipment for if you're thinking from a, uh, if you're thinking from a company perspective, right? It could be uh, your investment decisions, where to invest, which stock to invest, right? Which shipping technology to invest. So it could be many different things. Right, but here, just to keep things practical and simple, I'm using this example of mobile. So now we have these six criteria and these three alternatives. You can have five alternatives, you can have seven alternatives, so you can have 10 alternatives, it's up to you. But here we are considering only three alternatives and six criteria, right, to keep things simple. So maybe let's use some colors here. So let's say for criteria, we are using to use green color and for the alternatives, we are putting here some blue colors. So I normally like to have some color so that I can quickly see what is what, okay? Maybe here we can also insert another column and we call it A1 alternative one, A2 alternative two, A3 alternative three. Okay, looks nice, right? So now what we should do is 
we should normally rate these three alternatives for each of the criteria, right? So it is often a good idea to actually do the rating considering a scale of one to nine. And where we can say one is extremely poor and five is average and nine is extremely good and we have the values in between, right? But I'm not going to discuss in detail about them. So let's say I'm going to rate this uh, Samsung S20 and I'm saying, okay, quality, I'm giving it seven out of nine. iPhone, I'm giving it eight out of nine. Nokia, I'm giving it six out of nine. Now here, one of the great thing about multi-criteria is that you can include subjective and objective judgments or data in the same model. So that's one of the cool thing about this kind of multi-criteria decision-making methods. So for example, the quality one here, we are using subjective judgment, kind of following a scale like a Likert scale, right? But say for price, we can still use a scale like this. We can say, for example, for Samsung, so let's say the when we think about price, it is uh, let's say six for Nokia, the price is, for iPhone, the price is let's say nine, the highest one, and for Nokia, maybe it's five, okay? So we can have a subjective judgment here from one to nine scale as we were doing, but we can also have a like real data uh, measurement here as well. So for let's say for Samsung, it is about, uh, if I put something like $900, for iPhone, maybe it's $1,300, for Nokia, it's maybe $600, okay? So I just put the real data here. For comfort, again, we can come back to this scale of rating scale here. Samsung, let's say we give it seven, iPhone, we give it nine. And for Nokia, we give it seven, let's say, okay? For safety, we are giving it seven, we are giving it eight, we are giving it, let's say four. For style, this is seven, this is nine, this is, let's say, six something like that. For camera, we are giving it eight, we are giving it nine, we are giving it six, okay? So now we actually have done our rating and we have some data based on which we can actually do a decision making here. So for decision making here, one of the good idea uh, could be that we can just take the average here. One of the problem we can uh, get into is because if I'm going to take the average to make a decision making, which one gives me the highest score on average, to do that, it is good to have the data in the same scale. So let's say here, having this could really distort our average. So let's have a look actually how it looks like. So if I go for the average, okay, so, and then if I just scroll it here, we see that the highest average is here, right? Uh, which means we should maybe go for this one iPhone, okay, because this has the highest score. But now here we have multiple problems. One of the problem is that the price is, the price scores are in a different scale compared to other scales. And this pricing is actually inflating this score. And first of all, having higher price is not a good for us. We want to have lower price. But here, this high price is going to make the average even higher. So that's not really a good thing for us. Uh, for now, it is maybe easier for us to use this rating scale of one to nine, which will give us a more meaningful result. We can of course use, as I mentioned earlier, we can of course use any kind of data we want, but then for this, we have to do normalization of the data, okay? So which we'll see in later videos, but for now, let's to, let's to, to keep things easy, let's make it simple. So let's say for Samsung, uh, I would say that the price is pretty good. I would say, let's say, I will give it a like eight or something like that. For iPhone, the price is quite high. So I will give it a score of like five or like something like that. And then for Nokia, I will also give it like six or something like that. So now you see, even after having this rating, still we see that iPhone has the highest score of eight and we should now go for iPhone, right? So that would be the analysis here. So now that's great. From here we see that iPhone has the highest score and we should go for it. But now one of the problem here is that we have considered equal weights for each of the criteria, which may not be the case, okay? So which may not be really the situation that for any individual buyer, we will not have the equal priority for each of these criteria here. 
So we will have we might have different weights, right? For example, I might want to have more weight on camera than uh, let's say than price, or I might have more weight on quality than camera or price, right? So there could be different weighing system which are not considered in this framework. So in that case, we can create another column here and we can call it weight. Okay, let's say I'm going to make it like something like yellow or maybe this color. Yeah, it's okay, this color. So now there could be different ways of doing the weighing, but let's say we try to follow an approach where you want to have the weights from uh, values from zero to uh, 100. So we can do that as well. We can also have this one to nine. So it, you can pick the one that is suitable for you, right? Most of the multi criteria decision making methods, they have different ways of doing the weight, okay, where we do a lot of pairwise comparison and then we come to the weight. But let's say, let, let's go with the percentage system, okay? So let's say for me, I have quite high importance on camera. So I'm going to give it like 40% weight, okay? And here we should have maybe a column where we see the sum of the weights. Okay, so when we see the sum of the weights, we can see that how far we are from 100. Uh, then for quality, I would like to also have like 30%. For price, I would like to have let's say 20%, okay? For comfort, 5%, for safety, 0.5%. Uh, but now we already have 100, right? So with this, we already reached 100. So I don't have anything left for style. So maybe I can reduce a little bit on quality. So I can say, let's say 0.25 on quality. And then here I also put 0 0.05 on style. So in total, I have now, I have now this score of uh, one total, right? Great. So now, considering this weight, we can now come up with a solution again. And let's say if I create here three columns for these three alternatives, okay? Maybe one more, no, it's okay. Let's put it first here. And then I'm going to insert one more column here just to keep a blank column in between, okay? And let's say we are going to change the color of this slightly. Maybe again we go to for a greener color. It's okay, no problem. So now when we have the weights and when we have the rating, now what we are going to do is we are going to multiply each of these values with respective weight. So here I select the weight, I fix it using a four, multiply this with this value here. And then I drag it. Okay, so this is something I'm going to do for each of them. Okay. So, and then for all of this, I'm just going to move it here, drag it. So we take up to three decimal points to make it look nicer. I will just double check if all the multiplications are in right order. So yeah, everything seems right. And here then again, we can have this average. Right, so now we have the average. So now again, we see that iPhone is actually the the most suitable one based on these scores, right? And it looks pretty good. And here, interestingly, we get the same results from this analysis without the weights and here with the analysis with the weights. But now having a little bit different weights can really change your results. For example, let's say now on price we put 0 0.4 and here we put 0 0.2. You see, we just put more weights on price and less weights on camera, and now our best results is Samsung, okay? So when we do without weights, we don't really consider this part. What is more important? Which criteria is more important to us? Because for different person or different companies or di different 
projects, different criteria could be more important, right? So, so this is the main idea of multi-criteria decision-making where we have multiple criteria, multiple alternatives, and then we normally put weights and there are different ways of doing these weights and different ways of rating, different ways of rating and based on what our results change, right? But also here, when we put the weights, there are some other things that we haven't considered. That is the relationship between these two criteria. So quality and price, there is a relationship between them, right? There is a correlation. Price and comfort, there is a relation. Price and safety, price and style, style and camera. So there are correlation between each of the criteria, which we haven't considered. So this is why we would sometimes need the advanced multi-criteria decision-making models like analytic hierarchy process or HP or the best host method. So we will need those kind of methods where we are able to capture this association between the different criteria so that we get more optimal weights. And based on that, our decision will be even better and would reflect our problem scenario better and get us a even uh, get us better solution, more optimal solution, right? So that's the main idea of multi-criteria decision-making in simple words.